are my little cherub? My, you look most kissable today. <laughs> Do you think we have time for us? Just man, get a, away with it. Another cup of coffee? It's time you were downstairs. You and me, we sweat and strain. Bodies all aching and wrapped with pain. La, la, la. I forgot my glasses. <laughs> What's that you're hiding? Nothing. Nothing at all. So is this nothing at all you're guarding with your life? Well, if you must know, there's one. I've just been doing a little daydreaming. Daydreaming? Yes, about a nice little detached house with a garden. A detached house with a garden? Yes, and flowers. Lots of flowers. Sweet smelling jasmine. Sweet smelling jasmine? <laughs> what are you, Desmond? A parrot or a mockingbird? I'm a man. <laughs> and this man is telling you for the umpteen time that this is where we live, above the shop. And this is where we're going to live for the rest of our days until we go back to Guyana. So, it's tell you're telling me? Well, not exactly, <laughs> but yes. So it's all right for Desmond to dream about Guyana. But as for Shirley's dreams, but that's a different dream. It's a special dream, and you're part of that dream. And we can dream that dream together. <laughs> now you're coming on with a totally different dream, and I don't like it. I have no idea what is the matter with you, Shirley Ambrose. That's right. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot your glasses. So, I took the car to this little garage. <laughs> you're right, eh? Oh, yes. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, Walter. I hope I haven't kept you waiting long. So what's this about a car, Tony? I didn't know you had a car. Yeah, I bought it at the weekend. Maybe I'm paying you too much. <laughs> this who got this here last? <laughs> uh, ah, yes. Sheer perfection. <laughs> Tony, if you just buy this car, what you take it to the garage for? Hope you have just taken the words right out of my mouth. Well, that will teach you to keep it shut, then. <laughs> Let's get an MOT test. You buy a car with no MOT? Ah, for a seven-year-old minute, it seemed like it was in good nick, and it was a bargain. Ah, but when it's a bargain, not a bargain. <laughs> As an Ugandan friend of mine used to say, <laughs> you can examine the hindquarters of a rhinoceros, but that won't tell you how many teeth he's got. <laughs> well, yeah. I started out my doubts when the bloke at the garage didn't ask me if I was the owner. He asked me if I was the next to kin. <laughs> I don't understand you, Tony. What do you want a car for? It's just another expense to worry about. Sure, ain't an expense, man. I've got to get about, move around, get noticed. Everybody got ants in their pants about moving, <laughs> growing up in the world. I can't understand why people can't be happy with what they got, who they are. Bigger house, bigger car. <laughs> oh, I never had a car before. Next week, you'll be coming to work in a Jaguar, and then you'll be happy until you got a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I only bought my first ever car, let alone minutes to get about in. Oh, sorry, I haven't mentioned it. Oh. Desmond, <laughs> who got ants in their pants? Surely. <laughs> if something is troubling you, why not tell your friends? This friend is all ears. Which is West Indian for being nosy. <laughs> Shirley got all these leaflets upstairs. What leaflets? Leaflets from estate agents. She's daydreaming about moving house again. No harm in daydreaming, man. I daydream all day, and most nights as well. <laughs> Pork pie. Every adult should have a hobby. Every adult <laughs> should have a job. What I'm studying is what Charlie's studying that bothering me. I mean, I know my wife. Once she gets an idea into her head, it takes some shifting. And once she thinks about it, it's harder to shift. <laughs> Talking about things that are hard to shift. <laughs> what you doing here this morning, Beverly? That's a fine way to greet a body. When you first opened the shop, you used to invite all your friends to drop in. OK, you've dropped in. Now drop out. <laughs> I'm not a drop out. Anyway, I didn't come to see you, Desmond. I come to have a chat with Shirley about the move. Oh. What move? <laughs> what are you talking about? Do you know something I don't know, Beverly? So things are further forward than we knew. Tell us more. Don't listen to her. She can't tell you anything. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Cuthbert and I were talking this morning. He's quite lively in the morning, you know. <laughs> and he was saying, there's no smoke without fire. 
I saw Shirley going into the estate agent yesterday, <laughs> and I saw her coming out again with a whole load of leaflets. I know straight away she house hunting again. That don't mean anything, you stupid woman. <laughs> Ever so often, Shirley gets this being or bothered about moving house, but I told her, nothing doing. If I was your wife, I wouldn't want to live upstairs here. If you were my wife, I wouldn't want to either. <laughs> There's a lot to be said for being able to lock up the shop and go home in the evening. My home is up there and I go home to it every night. Oh, I wouldn't like to live on a job. I don't know. There are pros and there are cons. Me no. I'm pro living on the job, but I'm not going to let my wife con me into changing my mind. So, what are you going to say to her? I'm going to tell her once and for all that I wear the trousers in the Ambrose of home. <laughs> of course you do, Desmond. You look so silly in a skirt. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Hello, Beverly. What brings you here? I was on my way to the market to pick up Cutbutt's red mullet for his tea, and I'm just making a little detour to bring you these. You're reading my mind again? It's the powers. The strength of your <laughs> desires come true to me as clear as day. I saw She your... saw you going into the estate <laughs> Thank you, Beverly. I'll browse through these later. Browse through them? What for? Look back, keep your head still before I've got off your ears. <laughs> don't speak to Walter like that. Yes, you am speaking, so don't change the subject. Lord, sometimes Satan can lead men's tongues to talk in nonsense. I'm going. I can't take the atmosphere in here. <laughs> what is... <laughs> I wouldn't come in here if I was you, missus. Them throwing words around like poison darts. <laughs> It's been years. Everybody, this is Ada Ramsey. Hi, Ada. She and Shirley used to work together at the, uh, what do you call it? A Harley Quinn coffee bar. <laughs> it's still there? No. Mm -hmm. After 25 years? Yeah, but it's changed. Oh. Yeah, but you haven't, Ada. You don't look a day older. <laughs> Desmond, still got your smooth tongue, huh? Still got my good looks. Still got his big head. <laughs> <laughs> so will be. I've been busy. Well, how busy can busy be? Well, you know me. I like to travel around and strut my stuff. <laughs> Let me see. I've been to see the kids. Beth is nursing now in Miami, and Sonny is prospecting for gold in Australia. Looks like he hit it, too. <laughs> I am going to be a grandmother soon. I don't believe it. <laughs> and I met me some nice guys. Fooled around a little. <laughs> Married a couple. <laughs> divorced them. That's busy. You free now? <laughs> I like change. I like to move around. But you, still here. Yes, we still here. Yes, we still here. <laughs> but you're thinking of moving. Well, uh... Ada, read my lips. Nobody is moving. Did I say something? <clears throat> you sure did. Shut up. <laughs> so you're, you're going to have to do something about this sooner or later. Examine the problem. And you shut up too before I examine you out the door. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I don't think I like your attitude. And I don't like you, Shirley, telling anybody and everybody that we're moving. I haven't told anybody that we're moving. It's not my responsibility how they interpret things. But anyway, I can't see any harm in just looking. Most things in life start with just looking. Uh, <laughs> oh, I was just looking at that car. I ended up buying it. Yeah, uh, precisely what I mean. <laughs> oh, dear, I seem to have started something. Now, who's going to do my hair? Oh, I am. Oh. Fine. <laughs> I'll pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> Yo, sis, what are you looking at? Just moved the bag, Sean. I'm trying to set the table. Oh, Mum's not on about moving again, is she? 
I don't know, but those were just lying now. You should have had a rat that's going on downstairs. Dad doesn't like change, especially the change he didn't think up himself. Yeah, well, he won't get anywhere by trying to bully Mum. You know how stubborn she gets when she feels she isn't getting a fair crack of the whip? Yeah. Suppose she's serious this time. I mean, how do you feel about moving? Well, it... haven't you set this table yet? Look, Sean, move this bag. What's that you're hiding behind your back? Everybody seems to have something to hide today. <laughs> you stay right here. We're going to tackle this thing together. Mum, <laughs> Dad, sit down. Give me those. Yes, give them to him so he can tear them up. There's plenty more where they came from. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Dad, you know Mum wouldn't make any decisions without family discussion. I thought I was the only mistake you two ever made. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Looks as if we're going to make another one soon. Mum, you know... Don't be <laughs> Listen, Daddy, we're going to talk about this sensibly. She's going house hunting with that Ramsey woman again. Who's she? Mum, are you really serious about all this? I wasn't this morning, but right now I might well be. But what about Guyana? Ever since I can remember, you've been talking about when I retire and go back home. You got a better memory than your mother, that's for sure. We are a long way off retirement. Well, I'm certainly not ready to turn my toes up just yet. Look, Dad, I want to start home with my parents till I get married, but I think it'd be a great idea to move somewhere bigger. I mean, what do you think, Sean? Well, it depends how far I've got to travel to school, innit? That was a totally selfish observation, and in no way makes a useful contribution to the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> and what I suppose that mouthful you just came out with wasn't at all selfish? Well, it weren't meant to be. I just want to reassure Mum how happy we are at home. I mean, most kids aren't, you know, they can't wait to move out. When we first came here, you thought this place was paradise. No, it's not good enough for no, you. No, that's not enough. I've had enough of this. The only thing I want to hear about moving concerns moving the supper from off of the cooker and into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you moving. Look at that big old mango tree. I plan to hang my hammock in that tree. I can just close my eyes and see me swinging to and fro, to and fro. Rum punch by my side, mangoes above my head. What more could a man ask for? And there's my little grandson come to visit me, running across the yard. Dear little chap, baby Desmond. <laughs> he's splitting image of me. Oh, he's dark. Turn on the light, Matthew. We arranged to have a drink at the nag's head. I know. My grandson's come to visit. <laughs> have a rum punch. Have a mango. Are you feeling all right? Yes, I just don't feel like going out. Help yourself to a hammock. <laughs> well, Shirley. Out house hunting with that Ramsey woman again. And the children? What children? I don't have no children. They're all adults now. They want family discussions. When my father tell me do this, I do it. No back chat. Ah, but these days things are different. In this enlightened age, children have meaningful dialogue with their parents. If you want their cooperation, you have to try being subtle. How can you say no in a subtle way? <laughs> First you say maybe, then you say maybe not, then you say no. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's talking, <laughs> the artful dodger himself. <laughs> You're nothing but a part-time father and husband, so it's easy for you. My wife is out there plotting and conniving, aided and abutted by that Ramsey woman. <laughs> and she's booked for lunch tomorrow at that coffee bar where they used to work together. I mean, what are they up to? Well. They're probably talking about old times. Yeah, man. The good old days, you know, boyfriends and things. Well, I can't believe that. Surely never had any boyfriends. Or things. <laughs> I wish I could be a fly on the wall of that coffee bar tomorrow. You mean you would spy on your wife? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> probably she'd recognize me. I always fancied myself as a spy. You? A spy? Yes. When I was too young when the war broke out. But I can still do it, you know. The right disguise. <laughs> and make the perfect salute. I don't believe I'm hearing this. I do. <laughs> well, two coffees, please. Mm. Thanks. Falling in love is the easy part. Staying in love, now that is something else. 
You've managed to do that. Well, how you figure that out when all you've seen is us arguing? Body language. Hmm. Only your two mouths moving in discord. The rest of your body's in total harmony. <laughs> Somebody once said that people who love only once in their lives are shallow and mediocre. Then I wish I was shallow and mediocre. I wouldn't be so lonesome. So what happened? <laughs> All my life, I have spent my Sundays in church praying, Lord, lead me not into temptation. <laughs> then I spend the whole rest of the week yielding to every temptation that comes out. <laughs> I wish I could yield to temptation and just box Desmond's ears. <laughs> Is moving house a real passion with you? Not at all. I was just giving the idea some fresh air. It's a form of freedom to unlock your thoughts and trot them out from time to time. Well, it might all be a load of rubbish, but when you put it back in here, you feel a damn sight better. <laughs> You came straight from the bosom of your family into Desmond's arms. You forgot that he is only a man. Selfish and thoughtless. Mm. <laughs> yes, but what are you being? What do you mean? You know full well what I mean. Desmond's dream of retiring to Guyana is like... like a piece of fragile crystal, cherished all his life. Sir, my little dream is nothing. Well, that's just it. You know that it's just a little dream. But Desmond sees it as a threat. He's frightened that his dream will get pushed aside. Well, I respect his dream. I just want him to discuss it. Men don't discuss. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> put him up to this. Let's give him something to report on. Well, Ada, the house in Weybridge is just perfect. <laughs> I can't thank you enough for your help. I just have to see about putting down the deposit and arranging the mortgage. Mm. <laughs> 225,000 pounds is a lot of money, surely. <laughs> Are you sure you can afford it? Of course we can. When will you tell Desmond? Uh, I'll surprise him. Desmond and I have a joint account, and either of us can sign checks. Mm. Well, we better get going now. Perhaps there's time to get things moving today. Waitress! Waitress! <laughs> You summoned me over here to take action against my mother on the word of a spy? <laughs> what spy? Are you sure she said all those things or are you making them up? Would I do a thing like that? Sadly, yes. Well, she's not back yet. By now, she's probably down in the bank drawing out all her money. Michael, ring the bank and check. Look, don't be ridiculous, Father. Mother's never drawn a penny from the joint account. But it's always the first time. That's true. Yeah, by now, you could be the proud owner of a country mansion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Will staff be invited to the housewarming? Hey, my new car coming down for weekend trips. I've got to get it to that garage. Oh, shut up. Michael, phone the bank and see if she's there. Stop the check. Do something. Do something about what? Oh, thank heavens you're here. I need you. What for? There's a serious family crisis. 
Where's mum? She's the one who's caused the crisis. Don't, don't exaggerate, father. Well, I'm not entering into any discussion about mum unless she's here. Good yeah. for you, Sean. Neither am I. I've never known my mother to cause any crisis in this family. You see that? You see that? The young woman. <laughs> Shirley, I know you're going to be busy, but we must do it again soon. Yes. Busy moving to Weybridge, I suppose. <laughs> Weybridge? <laughs> Mother, have you been to the bank? I'll not sign the check. You wouldn't get the mortgage without my signature. Hold on, hold on. What's going on here? What you all talking about? What about the bank? And what is this about Weybridge? Oh, your father warned me about that innocent <laughs> look of yours. I know everything. Everything? <gasps> Oh. I was informed by an interested party. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Never mind how I know, I just know. So what, we moving to Weybridge? Not that I know of. I mean, I can hardly believe that all of my family and my friends could think that I would make such a major decision, like moving house, without discussing it with them. Well, Popeye? Nothing to do with me. <laughs> You don't think I would do that, Desmond? Oh, well, uh, I... Uh, I suppose not. But, I mean, would you drag me back to Guyana without us having a serious discussion? Well, of course not, Shirley. Oh, you sure? <laughs> oh, thank you, Desmond. Oh, well, I'm glad that's settled. Oh, you finished my wig. It does look nice. Do you want the tea? Yes, yes please. please. Oh, no. Not for Ada and me. We had a lovely lunch. Mm -hmm. And to top it all, a woman at the next table left her cheesecake untouched. <laughs> and we couldn't resist sharing it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny woman, wasn't she, Shirley? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> Apart from the beard. <laughs>
says, I think they're well lard. No, no, hard. <laughs> I am nine years old, and all the other kids in my class say that I've got a better voice than the lead singer. Yours, Sean Pastor Duchy Ambrose. <laughs> Easy. It was a joke, man. Yeah, you're telling me, well, larder. <laughs> Mum, you can't throw these away. These are my formative years, man. Oh, look, I've had enough. You two sort it out between yourselves. But sort it out by this evening, otherwise... What's that? Smashing, just oh, smashing. Oh, no, don't tell me. The, the kids. kids! You got it. My van, oh! You're right, Tony. My hair! <laughs> Where's Desmond? I sent him running after him. You did what? You underestimate this show. He's got the body of a man half his age. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could do the other one back. <laughs> that show them. They won't be back round here in a hurry. Mr. Queer Bob back. You don't fancy. <laughs> I don't want to catch you playing round here again. And if you fall long and break your legs, don't come running to me. <laughs> what do you do to my shop? Uh, Desmond. I mean, you suppose you're going to stand up and stick up with them again? No, Desmond, not now. You're hysterical. You hear me laughing? <laughs> Come on, Pops. I mean, everyone's kicked the ball for a window at some time or other. I haven't, have you? Uh, hypothetically speaking. I mean, I'm just going to stand there and take their side after what they done. Look, Des, it's, it's all right. There's no need to worry. I'm OK. I'm not talking about you, Tony. I'm talking about the shop window. No, no, no. Let's just get this mess cleared up. Gloria, Sean, get a broom and sweep up that glass. And be careful. Yeah, Tony, yeah. get somebody to fix the window. Desmond, sit down. OK. All right. <laughs> That's it. All right. I'm going to try explaining this to you one more time. Now, if the council close down the playground because they say they can't afford to make it safe, where else you think the children will have to play? Eh? The streets, the dangerous streets, and that's why I'm on the action group committee. The only danger to the streets is the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just open the window like everyone else? <laughs> well, Faye, what would have happened if we'd done this when we were kids? Boy, my father would have licked me. <laughs> your mother, she would have mashed up your backside. And you know what Shirley wants to do? Mash up your backside. <laughs> Give them a new playground. But she's right, Desmond. You don't read the local paper. It's not the kids' fault. It's the cuts. Don't tell me on this committee as well. Are you really Uncle Poupon? No, it's really Uncle Freddy Krueger. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> We're meeting the council this week. You two should be joining in, Desmond. You all should be lending your support to the action group. Oh, why? I have lent you far too much as it is without lending you my support as well. <laughs> well, obviously, your committee isn't working very well. Otherwise, the kids wouldn't be still kicking down my shop window. Well, for a committee to be effective, it must have objectives which are clearly communicated by an articulate advocate who commands the respect of both factions. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? It means we need someone to state our case in plain English. That counts Matthew out. <laughs> that counts all of you out. What you need is someone whose name is known to the community, someone whose name is associated with uh, respect. Well, who's respected round there? Yeah. Well, there is someone whose name is big in Bellenden Road, for instance. Oh, I get it. And it also happens to be the name of a shop. Yes. And what's it called? Mr. Patel. No! <laughs> Arnie the Baker. No! Kentucky Fried Chicken. No! No! Desmond. Yes. You're respected in the community. Yes. So you're going to make the speech to the council. No! <laughs> It's ain't too bad for one of Marcus tapes, is it? You have to shout! If it gets them clearing up their jumble, it's fine by me. You can see the place look like a pigsty. Well, it's your two little piglets. <laughs> <laughs> Reunited and it feels so good. Easy. Reunited cos we understood. There's one perfect thing and sugar. This one is it. We're <laughs> so excited cos we're reunited. Hey, hey! So that's how the shop window was broken. <laughs> Michael, what is this rubbish? That is 
reunited by peaches and herbs, got to number four, April 1979. Not that one, the one that's on now. Oh, you kids nowadays, if there's no rapping halfway through a record, you're lost. All right, then. We'll all listen to it. Mother, why you had to call me over here for jumble, I'll never know. I mean, there's nothing I'd possibly want to keep. Well, I'm sorry, Michael. I thought you had more than just this shoebox. Oh, great. I come all this way for an empty shoebox. <laughs> hey, mastermind, name that tune. Michael Ambrose, take three. <laughs> Michael Ambrose proudly presents. Uh, look, I think we've heard it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michael Ambrose production. Michael Ambrose is the <laughs> little, little, la, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Michael Ambrose. Ah, oh, you think Michael's in this? <laughs> <laughs> as his ever faithful horse, Silver. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready, Dobbin? Yes, Master! Episode 9, High Noon in Peckham. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the sound of a damsel in distress. Help! Help! <laughs> I think you... I mean, we've suffered enough, Michael. <laughs> well, Mike, only one thing to say to you, boy. Well said! <laughs> At least I used my imagination. You kids nowadays have so many toys, you don't use your minds. I had little, but I was happy with my lot. I had to entertain myself. Well, I'll say one thing, son. Don't give up the day job. <laughs> Oh, Dobbin was a little toy horse on wheels we bought for Michael. Oh, a toy horse on wheels. It was a Christmas <laughs> present. <laughs> that horse. I had to laugh when I gave it to Lee for his car boot sale this morning. You did what? <laughs> you gave away Dobbin? That's typical of Lee. <laughs> Always flogging a dead horse. <laughs> You of all people would have understood how important Dobbin was to me. He was my only true friend. But, Michael, a moment ago you say you didn't want to have anything kept. Yes, but I didn't mean for you to give away my childhood. Did I miss something? We are talking about a toy horse. Oh, you kids think this is very amusing, don't you? But, Michael, I didn't think you would have wanted to keep it. It was virtually falling apart. It was not. It was in perfectly good order. It was mangy. Michael, I don't understand. That's been the problem for the last 30 years. No one's wanted to understand. All that over something called Dobbin, I aren't you? <laughs> what are we gonna do? Oh, give him back his damn horse. <laughs> it's too late. Lee would have sold it by now. Did we really give him such a rotten childhood? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I've got some good news that will please everybody. You're going into a nursing home? <laughs> if you don't shut up, you're the one that's going to need nursing. <laughs> well, quite get on with it. It's official. You're the people's choice to speak to the council to save the playground. You're still on about that again? I told you, I mean, I'll do it. Josh, there's my poor Why, how you find this out? We're conducting a poll. Oh, why, you couldn't conduct a bus. <laughs> <laughs> what question did you ask? I did it properly. I asked them, you think Desmond should speak to the council to save the playground, don't you? <laughs> and they all said yes. Uh... Oh, it's in a good cause. Desmond is for the children. Children? I've had it up to here with children. First they break the shop window, then Michael accuses you of being a bad parent. Me? A bad parent? Oh, or whatever. There's no whatever about it, Desmond. You know what your trouble is? You're too busy worrying about what you want rather than thinking about what other people need. Like speaking up for the playground, for instance. Hey, it is. Speech, 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 speech. What I need from all of you is peace and quiet. I don't want anyone trying to convince me to make this foolish speech. If I was to hear anything more about speeches or children of playgrounds for the rest of the day, I'll, I'll scream. Desmond, what's this me hear about you not making the speech for the children's playground? Here's one I called earlier. We, the community, make you what you are today. And all you do is tick, tick, tick. What you should be doing is putting something back out on the streets. Right. I'll start with you. You make my heart stop. Promises, promises. Uh, forget it, babe. We've tried everything. We'll have to get someone else. 
Don't let your blood pressure rise. My blood pressure? You mother better sit down! Lauren! Oh, Lord, now I hear screeching in the ears! Hey, look, what's up? You see? I bet one of them kids kick a ball through somebody's car window. <laughs> Sleep at night. I don't know if you could sleep at night with all this noise. Oh, let me take care of the poor little fella. Oh, blood, blood. <laughs> oh, yes. The poor child could bleed to death if he had to wait for you. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. That's not too bad, is it? Don't cry now. So, um, what's your name then? Michael. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> Come on, Dad. You must have read it all down by now. Just a minute, just a minute. There's a lot to remember. Come on, Desmond. We've been waiting for half an hour. <laughs> just, just read us what you got. Mm. All right. <clears throat> The children need a playground because, one... Yeah? Well, that's as far as I've gone. That's <laughs> where you get this one from, Shirley. Oh. Desmond, you haven't taken in anything we've been saying? Well, I... Oh, come on, Mr Ambrose. It's easy. It's just common sense. You expect him to find that easy? It's all well and good for you. Not you've had ages to think about it. You've been to the meetings, you've studied it in full, and you've made up your mind. That's why we've given you the benefit of what we've thought out so far. All you have to do is write down what we've been telling you. And then put that in your own words at the council meeting. Yeah, well, that's the bit I've been having trouble with. Oh. <laughs> OK, let's recap. I made the first point, which was that every child should have a safe place to play and explore, under proper supervision and away from the dangers of the street. Uh -huh. So you put that in your own words. <laughs> Children should be kept off the streets because they're dangerous. <laughs> We'll come back to that one. Now, I made the second point, which was that children need to let off steam, play rowdy games, without the grown-ups telling them off all the time. Why? Why what? Well, why should they be rowdy and play around? I mean, why can't they be seen and not heard like we were when we were their age? You think you were like that? Hmm? Desmond, when you were a child growing up in Guyana, you can take yourself off into the fields, mm -hmm. play down by the stream, climb trees, throw stones. You had all that space. You could get out from under your mother's feet. Poor woman. <laughs> you could be gone for hours and she knew she didn't have to worry. She only had to worry when you come back. <laughs> Look, Dad, this is London. It was bad enough when me and Louise was little. It's even worse now. Yeah, most people round here haven't even got their own backyards. Mm -hmm. They live in flats, a lot of them in high-rise. Where can a mother send her kids where they will be safe and they won't be a nuisance? Ah, yes. Well, this all starts to make more sense now. So? In your own words? Uh, don't rush me. Don't rush me. <laughs> Is that the time? I have to get back to cook cup with his red mullet. Well, can't he himself? You ever know a man to do anything for himself? Oh, shut up. <laughs> uh, 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 stop gossiping. <laughs> <laughs> right, I got it. Ah. London is not like Guyana. <laughs> so to protect innocent shopkeepers' windows, <laughs> if children want to behave badly, they should be kept under strict supervision in caged areas. <laughs> in a report sent to Policy and Resources on the Five Subcommittee on December the 7th, 1989, the Bellenden Road Action Group highlighted the woefully inadequate resources of the... Dad? This is like one of Mr. Spencer's history lessons. Oh, thank you, Sean. Oh, I don't think Sean meant that as a compliment, Des. It's not what you say, Desmond. It's how you say it. Yes, Pop. It's liven it up, man. It ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. The council is meeting a respected businessman, Mr. D. Ambrose, not MC Desmond. <laughs> well, Desmond, the most famous orator in ancient Greece was called Demosthenes. He'd have to be a good orator just to pronounce his name. <laughs> and he used to practice with marbles in his mouth. I'm not putting marbles in my mouth. I've got it! <laughs> well, I hope you ain't catching. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so has you been naked? The cop stoppers. No, it's not me. I've seen the kids do it. Anyway, it's for you. Here's the next best thing to marbles. You don't need a gobstopper, Des. You need a gobstarter. Because <laughs> you are elected by the community to serve the community. He sat up Marlon Brando. Yeah, the gobfather. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Desmond. Forget Demosthenes and his marbles. Oh, I don't know. These marbles don't taste too bad. <laughs> and think of the great speakers of our time. Martin Luther King, Osaji Kwame Nkrumah, Frank Bruno. <laughs> no, I mean, Harry. Uh, I never mean the great speakers. He's got to get on with it. You've only got five minutes to put your point across. All right, all right. As councillors, you are elected by the community to... No, 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 Desmond. The art is in the pause. You must emphasize each phrase separately. All right, all right. As councillors, you are elected <laughs> by the community <laughs> to serve the community. <laughs> we, you're getting it. You've got to move your hands about. Yes, yeah, so like this, the Acorn Grove playground it needs investment, yes. refurbishment, and reopening. <laughs> I'm not a helicopter. You want me to take? <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> Lee, have you found Michael's toy horse? Nah, but I found a person who bought it off me. And? No can do, Shell. They wouldn't sell it unless I paid double the price. What? That's right, one pound. <laughs> so, why didn't you buy it? Michael thinks it's priceless. So do I. I wouldn't give anything for it. <laughs> <laughs> and don't come back without it. All right, I got it. <clears throat> okay, Desmond, show us. And when you reach an important point, punch the air. And when you get to the meeting, punch the councillor. <laughs> Never in the annals of history has so much been owed by so many to so few. We shall fight them on the sandbox, <laughs> on the swings, and on the seesaws. We shall never no surrender. Mm, the, the children need. Yes, boy, the steps. Get out! Red money. Yes, boy, the steps. I want the red money. What's going on here? Desmond, all right, you had a bad dream. I was making this. I've lost my voice, surely. I'm sure? Of course, I... yes, I'm sure. I'm not surprised you've been practicing that speech all day and night. This speech is today. What are we gonna do? We'll have to cancel. Uh, we'll do no such thing. Give me those notes. Madam Chair, what we are talking about here today are human beings and their lives. Yes. Like you, I am a mother, and these are our children. If we don't take action, instead of comforting a hurt child, it won't be long before we're comforting a bereaved parent. Rebuild the playground now. <laughs> well done, Mother. I'm very pleased for you. And I appreciate you coming straight here to let me know personally, even if the council did only award you half the money. But did you have to bring Rent a Fan Club with you? <laughs> Oi, we're not Rent a Fan Club. We're the Acorn Grove Action Group. Yeah. We supported it when it needed us. It's for the children. Yes, yeah, Smargo, you were a kid once. Yeah, I wouldn't count on that. You know what it's like. Don't you think today's kids have a right to play safely? Look, I understand all that, and I dare say you're right, but why are you telling me this? But we need a private donation to make up the rest of the money. Give us the rest of the money, no man. <laughs> well, 
Congratulations, Pogpa. You're a true diplomat. This is a bank, not a charity. But, Michael, you have the perfect credentials to be a sponsor. Yes, Michael, you're well-known and respected in the community. And you are our little financial wizard. Tell me something I don't already know. <laughs> I find it ironic that you can devote so much time to those kids who are strangers after all. And you didn't even care how your own flesh and blood felt. Don't be silly, Michael. Of course we cared. And still do. Father, I've noticed you've been rather quiet. Cat got your tongue? <laughs> Cat got him vice. He lost it. He's a little horse. And talking of a little horse, Michael, if we could get Dobbin back for you, would you give us the rest of the money? Three, four. Go ahead, make his day. or I won't be responsible for the consequences. Yes, Mr. Ambrose, you're making enough noise to wake the dead. And if I did, they would probably get in the bathroom before me. <laughs> and don't put your toast under the grill, huh? You can have your breakfast on the landing. I don't want my toast under the grill. I want my head under the shower. Every morning is the same. Perhaps you overdid the toilet training when they was young. <laughs> Surely was right. I have woken the dead. It's <laughs> boring when it's cool, cos I'm taking a shower. You should take five minutes, not half an hour. Hey, you can pay in the morning, Pops. I just want to come with that. What's the time? Oh, I don't know. I've been standing here so long, I've lost track. Shirley, what is the time? <laughs> You're here, come out of there at once. This is your father speaking. <laughs> Turn off the taps. Stop using my hot water. <laughs> You're open this door. <laughs> Shirley, your daughter's stolen my towel. You're up. If I'm not brushing my teeth in 30 seconds. Shirley, is it too late to have them adopted? Of course I understand, Stacy. No problem. So, what have you done with your spare room? Oh, excuse me. A nursery. Congratulations, I didn't know. Nice one. OK, yeah. <laughs> so, we'll see that at the Squash Club in a few months, then. Ciao. Damn. I don't believe it. The decorators are arriving in three hours' time. They're going to turn my flat into a building site, and I've got nowhere to stay for the next four days. Well, there's always a spare bed at my flat, if you uh, I think it's important that we keep our relationship strictly professional, don't you, Mandy? After all, we wouldn't want tongues wagging. Suit yourself. <laughs> Mr. Parkinson wants those girls to stand straight away. <laughs> Look, here, try that top number, would you? You seem to know lots of women, sir. That's the thing about my private life, Mandy. Oh, what's that? It's private. <laughs> no reply. Well, then just give up. Try that one. I think I had nothing better to do. My filing tray is positively groaning. <laughs> it's an answering machine. Evangeline's not at home right now. All right, all right. What does someone called Evangeline look like? Mind your own business, Mandy. Just dial the next number, please. What, this one, sir? Yes, yes, yes. If you say so, sir. Hello, I have a call for you from Mr. Michael Ambrose. Hi, it's Michael. Listen, I'm having my flat redecorated and I wondered if you wouldn't mind uh, putting me up for a few days. 
Mum? <laughs> uh, yes, Mum. Uh, the, the decorator's arriving this evening and <laughs> you'd love to have me. <laughs> but thinking about it realistically, I wouldn't want to put you to... Um, it's no trouble. <laughs> yes, you're the first person I call. <laughs> yes, I know we don't see enough of each other. OK, see you around eight. Can't wait. Bye, Mum. Mandy! <laughs> Keep your head still, Mum. The kids today have no respect for their elders. Things were different when I was a child. Yes, but children knew their place in Victorian times, poor father. Which is more than you do. Why don't you keep still? What's wrong with you? There's a lamp on the bench where I'm sitting. It's very uncomfortable. I think it needs stuffing. That's not the only thing. Ooh. What I'm saying is that a man needs his space to breathe. <laughs> to strut his stuff and leave it down. Hey. 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 I totally concur. Human beings need clearly defined areas of territory. These are necessary to create self-awareness and essential for the promotion of self-esteem, psychological balance, and well-being. <laughs> An African for strutting your stuff. Personally, I settled to be able to brush my teeth. And I'll settle for him speaking plain English and getting out of my seat. Ouch! <laughs> no, I want you 100% on that one, Des. You know, a cramped style is no style at all. That is the truest word you ever spoke, Tony. My style is so cramped to have nowhere to move my stuff, much less strut it. But wait till you build your house back home. You can have a whole room to yourself. Just think of it. Privacy. Yeah, I can see it now. Sign above the door, big letters, Desmond's Den. Come out! Hmm. <laughs> no entrance without the permission of Desmond Ambrose Esquire. Except for your best friend, Augustus Neapolitan Cleveland Grant. <laughs> or Popeye, for short. <laughs> Who is always welcome. Uh, this will have to be a very big sign. <laughs> um, why don't you just try no scrunders? Or no students! <laughs> You want to have a password so only your best mates can get in. Like open sesame. Uh, open says Desmond, like. Ah, knock three times and ask for Jazzy D. I like it, I like it. Right, that's security, sussed. Now, what are you going to have in there, Des? A well-stocked bar. The best rums that money can buy. A fine library of books, perhaps. Ah, another bar, just in case the first one run out. You got to be too careful. A bench with no lamp in it. And a really neat sound system, Des. A 36-inch color TV with a satellite dish so we can watch the races. <laughs> Follow me, gentlemen, through the French windows onto my private veranda overlooking the sea. My custom-made domino table lies in the shade. Palm trees sway <laughs> beside the biggest bucket of rum punch you've ever seen. Yeah. 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 Steady on, Des. This is racy stuff, mate. And in the evening, I lie in my hammock watching the sun go down, blowing my trumpet as long and as loud as I like. Uh -oh. <laughs> I've never known you have trouble blowing your own trumpet, Desmond Ambrose. <laughs> <laughs> and after a few rums, I'd like to see you trying to get into a hammock. <laughs> Remember that time at Auntie Nora's? When you try getting into one after a few nightcaps too many? All right, all right. Uh -huh. What a mess. You look like a big fish caught in a net. <laughs> in the end, we had to cut him out. <laughs> you see, there isn't even room around here for a man to dream. Well, a little dream of mine just came true. What, we went to pool? Better than that. Michael's coming home to stay for a few days. Who? What? <laughs> well, you said a dream, surely not a nightmare. <laughs> We're gonna put him on a hook behind the door. That's the only place you have room to fit. We'll discuss that this evening when everybody's here. Uh, I bear it. There is the time-honored tradition of consulting the head of the household on these matters. Oh, who might that be? Well, obviously the oldest and wisest in the family. Me. All this, yes. <laughs> I think that's one is right, Shirley. The order of this world depends on the proper establishment of rank. As we say in Africa, if the tiger is standing, the mouse can't take a pew. Move over, mouse. Ouch. But he's right, Shirley. I mean, back home in your house, it was your father that ruled the roost. My father took his instructions from God when he was in the pulpit and from my mother when he was at home. <laughs> and this is not a matter for your debating society. Sorry, Sorry sir. sir. <laughs> so, 
You object to having your son to stay? Well, not exact. Well, who will be doing the extra shopping? I didn't will say... Will you be doing the extra cooking and tidying up? No, but... Exactly. So shut your mouth and give the man a shave. <laughs> His beard is longer now than when he came in. Don't you nod your head at me. I'm armed and dangerous. <laughs> trying to kiss me if you must know he was trying to take something out of my eye sure sis with his lips sure and goes you've got a mind like a sewer look who's talking that guy steve's got the pick of every girl in peckham well he's not gonna have the pick of my daughter only kidding man. <laughs> steve happens to be one of the few good guys around that's what i mean good at what <laughs> yes, well, aren't you gonna say anything about the kind of people your daughter associating with I have no say in what goes on in my own home. Why should I bother what goes on outside it? I was still in a bad mood about this morning. I said I was sorry. I think I was sleepwalking. <clears throat> What's new about that? <laughs> your father is in one of his childish moods because your brother Michael is coming to stay for a few days. What? You're not serious? <laughs> you see what I mean, Shirley? I think we should put this to the vote. All those in favor of Michael staying somewhere else, raise their hands. <laughs> when you two start paying rent around here, then we can start voting. Don't we have any say? As a matter of fact, you do. I should think so too. Uh... You can decide which of you gives up your room for your big brother. What? <laughs> well, it ain't gonna be me. Well, it's definitely not gonna be me. Well, then I suppose it's gotta be me. <laughs> I'm gonna stay by Pope. I'll just go and pack. Desmond, you don't have a room to give up. <laughs> Sean, because he's the youngest. That's not fair. I'm always the youngest. Why can't Gloria be the youngest for a change? <laughs> because, stupid, I'm older than you. A mere technicality. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. <laughs> Phone a child. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Sean, you'll sleep on the couch. See? Oh, Mum! It wasn't raised voices I heard, was it? Oh, Michael. You're early. Hello, Mother. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I think I better come back when everybody's in a better mood. Yeah, in about three years. <laughs> Make it five. Yes, man. Gloria. Maybe this isn't such a good idea after all. Mother. Nonsense. Sean has just said how pleased he would be if you would take his room. Sean, that's very decent of you. I wouldn't be putting you out. Oh, of course not. The only thing getting put out would be my back sleeping on his couch. Well, it would be a little <laughs> small for me. Small? He couldn't get his head on it. <laughs> Right, everything's settled. Michael, you can put your things in Sean's room. Hang on. Does that mean that this will be my room while Michael's staying in mine? Yes. Right, then we better get the rules sorted out. Rules? What rules? Well, for one thing, I don't walk in and out of your bedroom all the time, do I? <laughs> so, so, after 10 o'clock, I don't want anyone in my bedroom without my permission. Oh, well, that seems fair. No, it isn't. The late film starts at 10. And the cricket's on after that. Well, it so happens that I've got a test first thing in the morning. And I fancy it early night after I've done my revision. In silence, in my room. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. We can all watch my portable. <laughs> To me. Yeah, well, nothing's gonna look big on this screen. The size of Michael's TV is in direct proportion to his brain. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's my watch alarm, Father. Time for one of these. Well, on the pill then, Michael. No, <laughs> it happens to be a vitamin pill, Gloria. Everything I need's in that one small capsule. My, don't they make hotel rooms small these days? <laughs> Mother, was that coffee decaf? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, no, coffee with caffeine. No, I'll never get to sleep. Well, you should try cocoa with toenails. <laughs> I'm 
sorry we are unable to provide our usual standard of room service. <laughs> oh, my! <gosh. laughs> Good Lord, how did I miss that? Is something the matter, Michael? Yes, the bottom's about to fall out of guilt. Hi, Hi Angus. It's Michael. It, Michael Ambrose. Michael Ambrose from the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to move what I've got in guilt into consolidated bonds first thing in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about bottoms falling out. Would you like to move yours off my leg before I fall out, would you? Yeah, and instead of moving out of guilt, yeah, into consolidated bonds, why don't you move out of here into an hotel? <laughs> oh, stop it, you two. I think it's lovely and cosy having us all together again like this. Poor Sean doesn't know what he's missing. <laughs> What do you mean you haven't started yet? It's a one-bedroom flat, Mr. Murphy, not Windsor Castle. <laughs> well, could you at least get started on the bedroom then? <laughs> Tell Charlie Mr. Ambrose is very anxious to return home as soon as possible and they'll be amply rewarded for their efforts. Oh, people got eating here, you know, Michael. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Gloria. Anxious to return home, are we? You shouldn't be listening to people's personal phone calls. Well, what made you come here to stay instead of staying with one of your buffy pals? Well, naturally, I thought as I don't see enough of Mother, Father, myself and Sean... None of the others would have you, eh? I'll have you know, Gloria, I have a large circle of loyal friends who would put me up at the drop of a hat. Stitch you up, more like. <laughs> what about Patricia? Why didn't you stay with her? Patricia and I have always had the understanding we do not live together. Smart girl. <laughs> Lady friends, then little black book getting a bit thin these days. I assure you, Gloria, there are no problems in that department. <laughs> what about Big Stephanie? <laughs> she looks like she's got plenty of room. Oh, there's always Evangeline. <laughs> little sister, this was and always will be my first choice. <gasps> <laughs> the first place he thinks to stay? To the place with the least space in Peckham. I had to queue up from half past six this morning to get into my own bathroom. <laughs> and when I finally came down to breakfast, I had to wait till Shirley had finished making Michael's. Well, it didn't take long to pour out his muesli. No, it was a Spanish omelette that took the time and the three rungs of toast. Shirley, you mustn't wear yourself out. Sit down, man. <laughs> Put your feet up. Any chance for another cup of tea? <laughs> would be nice. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> Maybe Michael could come and stay by you, Pope, right? That's when I would be only too happy to relieve you of your burden. But I've got a drip in my ceiling. There's a great big bulge in the plaster. It's hanging down and the whole thing can go at any time. Morning. Talking of things that could go at any time. Michael. <laughs> Michael. You've got all the things I left out for you. Your sandwiches and your clean handkerchief. Yes, Mother. <laughs> By the end of the week, she'll be changing his nappies again. <laughs> I'm cooking your favourite for dinner tonight. Spicy chicken with dumplings. Delicious. Mm. Mm. I'll be home around about eight. I've got a squash match. Uh, what is all this about spicy chicken? <laughs> Today is Tuesday. We should be having fish. Well, you are. Michael's having the chicken. You know you can't stand fish bones. <laughs> Sounds like it's Michael getting the star treatment round here, Dave. Well, this is only fitting. In my family back home, when the elder son returns, like the prodigal son, we celebrate in a big way. What? Roast a fatty calf or something? Yes, it's a cause for much rejoicing and happiness. Except for the fatty calf. We'd have a party, and all the neighbourhood would attend. Well, you've got the spicy chicken, Des. Now only need the rest of pecking to show up. All I need for you is to shut up and to cut that man's hair. But you, then why don't you put up Michael for a few days and the two of you can celebrate together? Well, unfortunately, as you know, I have only one bathroom and I'm not prepared to share it. And I'm not prepared to share my part of the bench. Oh, <laughs> you Africans, you got the largest continent in the world to sit around in and you have to come all the way to pack up. my seat. So much for a man having his own space. Soon I'll be sleeping in the barber's chair. It's the only place I can find any space around here anymore. Come on, the man. <laughs> Who are you coming on, the man? Come everybody. Jeez. Oh, Gloria. <coughs> Michael's forgotten his sandwiches. Pop them into the bank for him. Oh, Mum, do I have to? Do as your mother says, Gloria. You don't want Michael fading away from lack of food now, do you? What, Michael? The man mountain? 
Fat chance. <laughs> so, how are things going at home? Very well indeed, Mandy. You wouldn't believe how close our family is. Oh, I always thought things were a bit strained. Not at all. Sean, for instance, even offered to give up his room for me. And Gloria? Well, Gloria and I have always been devoted to each other. Really? Yes, I have a very special relationship with my family. Gets better as the years go by. <laughs> Ooh, listen, you ungrateful buppy pillock. If Mum was to get up at a crack of dawn to pander to your whims, make your sandwiches, you could at least engage your brain in the morning and take them with you. Here, I hope you choke. <laughs> All right, Mandy. <laughs> Michael! 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 I've had enough, Mum. Sean's going to Gary's for a few days and I'm going to stay with Louise. I was late for school this morning. Yeah, and I just got to my first tutorial by the skin of my teeth. Well, they can't have their education being interrupted. OK. Just as long as their parents say it's OK. Oh, it's no problem. See you later. <laughs> well, now you've only got Michael to get in your way. Michael and I could get in each other's way on a football pitch. <laughs> You needn't worry about that any longer. I'm moving back to my flat. Michael? It's not that I haven't enjoyed staying here, but... <laughs> <laughs> These decorators of mine are only going to finish the job if I'm there to supervise, so I, I better get back. Can I give you a hand with anything? Bags? <laughs> Taxis? Well, if you're sure it's for the best. Yes, I'm sure it is. <laughs> Thanks for everything. I'll phone you. And then there were two. <laughs> Do you want some more tea, Desmond? The last cup isn't cold yet. <laughs> Maybe I could bake something. Why, there's no one to eat it. <laughs> In a few years' time, you're going to be like this every night. They all have to leave home eventually. You know what they say? You don't know what you got until you haven't got it anymore. We'll be all right, as long as we have each other and they come to visit. Except Michael. <laughs> Would you like a game of dominoes? No. Is it because I beat you last time? <laughs> I think I'll pop round and see Beverly. Shirley, why don't you relax and take it easy? We haven't had any peace in here for the last week. I like it that way. And I like it this way. <sighs> Ambrose residence, Desmond Ambrose speaking. A reverse charge call from Peckham. It could be one of the children. Maybe something's gone. All right, all right. I'll take the call. Hello? Desmond, it's me, Popeye. Popeye, what's the matter? You know that drip? My ceiling caved in. The whole flat is flooded. Hello? Uh -huh. I wonder if I could sleep in the shop. Popeye, I wouldn't hear of it. Uh, I won't make any noise. I'll even sleep on the bench with the lumpy stuffing. I'm not fussy. Hello? Hello? Uh, you won't even know I'm there. Popeye? Hello? Come over here at once. You can have Sean's room or Gloria's room, or we have a very comfortable settee. Oh, Desmond, you and Shirley are true friends. I uh, think nothing of it. We'd love to have you. Tell him I hope he's hungry. There's only one thing, Popeye. What's that? If you go in the bathroom before me in the morning, I'll never speak to you again. <laughs> Paper was like gold in medieval times. I 
you want tobacco? Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Shirley, are you awake? No. <laughs> Why not? Because I'm asleep, Desmond. I'm not. I know. I can't sleep. It's typical of you, isn't it? Just because you can't sleep, I am not allowed to. Men. <laughs> Why can't you sleep, darling? I don't know. I've been like this for a few weeks now. Well, all I can say, Desmond, is get used to it. You know what they say? The older you get, the less sleep you need. Good night. <laughs> so you think I'm getting old? Well, you're older than me, and I'm no spring chicken. <laughs> I could still put the spring in your step. Not tonight, eh, Desmond. <laughs> I'm tired. So you think I'm getting old? Sorry. I didn't mean to say that. It, it might be stress. I mean, you have been working very hard recently. Yes, I've been busy all afternoon one day last week. <laughs> Perhaps you should go and see Dr. Patricia. Hmm. Perhaps you should. Good night, love. Good night, love. Hmm. So you really think I'm getting old, do you? Yes, dear. <laughs> uh, what seems to be the problem, Desmond? <laughs> Shirley says I'm getting old. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, I haven't been sleeping too well at nights lately. Any particular reason for this? Well, if I knew the reason, I wouldn't be here. You just slip your temper off. Oh, I'm not sure Michael would approve of you undressing. Off. <laughs> Ooh. I've never been doctored by a young lady before. Are your movements regular? Oh, yes, thank you. Are yours? Yes, you Look, man, just give me some sleeping pills. I'll get some sleep. I'll be out of your hair, and everybody will be happy. I'm not one of these prescription doctors, Desmond. When was the last time you did some exercise? Exercise? What's that got to do with sleeping? A lot. I'll just check your blood pressure. I'm not suggesting anything too strenuous, because you're not that young. <laughs> what I mean is you need to stimulate the body, get the blood circulating so the body feels naturally tired at the end of the day. Some light jogging to start with, or a brisk walk after the evening meal. That should sort you out. Yes, to an early grave. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, Desmond? Uh, Desmond, this is Doreen. Ah, uh, Linda. Ah, uh, Julie. <laughs> So what's the matter, Desmond? The old pacemaker giving you a hard time? Looks like as I should be asking you the same question. Me? I never felt better. You see these trainers? It's 
them that put the spring in my step. Oh, I thought it was Doreen, uh, Linda, uh, Julie. It is. It is her that bought them for me. There's the fox. You want to catch a 36? Yes. Quick! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, what can I say? This promotion has come as a complete surprise. It's true that over the years... Come in. Mandy, where have you Excuse been? Excuse me, you are not the only one I have to tend to in this boys' brigade. I do have other work to do. Has Philip been giving you grief again? No, not really, sir. Well, only now and then. Just now, actually. Mandy... Yes, sir. What does my dear beloved boss have to say about me? Nothing. What? Nothing about my chances of promotion at the review board tomorrow morning? No. Wait a minute. I'm your assistant. If you want to know what the manager thinks about you, why don't you speak to his assistant? Yes, but you're the eyes and ears of the office, Mandy. Are you saying I'm a gossip and a snoop, sir? Well, you could keep your ear to the ground. Let me know what the odds are. I mean, I'd do anything. Anything, sir. <laughs> I do something. Sounds interesting, sir. Uh, <laughs> I do everything in my power to assist you in your burgeoning career. Oh, that's very burgeoning of you, sir. <laughs> How about dinner tonight, 8.30 at Le Caprice? Le Caprice? You need a second mortgage to eat there. Well, if you get the promotion, you might be able to afford one. <laughs> yes. 8.30 it is, then. <laughs> I got a letter from my brother back home. Yes, and? Well, he's all right. <laughs> you remember Cowfoot Jacobs? <laughs> yes, they call him Cowfoot because he had skinny legs. How quaint. Well, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> remember Iron Lungs, the fisherman? Yes. He could hold his breath underwater for three minutes. He tried four and he drowned. <laughs> Remember short arm Tony? Don't tell me. He's, He's dead. dead. How you know? <laughs> I'm not surprised. He must have been all of 90. 99. What a shame he missed his telegram from the Queen. <laughs> Remember the Reverend Patterson? He's dead? No, he sends his regards. <laughs> I wonder what the doctor will have to say about Desmond. Mm, he's very much alive. Well, he's not getting any younger. No, but he's still younger than you. Dad's gone to the doctor's because he can't sleep, not to hand in his obituary. <laughs> Remember Desmond Ambrose? He went mad. Desmond? What do you reckon, sir? Do I look cool or do I look cool? What are you saying? <laughs> hey, man, you're really kicking with him. I couldn't borrow them tonight, could I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> Is that what I mean by our second childhood? <laughs> yes, man, what happened? Well, I went to see Patricia and she prescribed the exercise. So here it is, the exercise range. It's the latest thing. <laughs> I think it's too late for you. <laughs> Not at all, Shirley. It is essential for the efficiency of the machine that we call a body that we exercise it very frequently, particularly for those of us who are not so young. <laughs> I myself am a bit of a gymnast. Please allow me to demonstrate. <laughs> The finale. <laughs> Be careful, you don't split your different. <laughs> Desmond, um, how much them trainers cost? Well, they were. They're about ninety pounds. <laughs> how much? Well, they were the sale, sure. Look, they got these things you can pump up. They're supposed to. They're supposed to cushion the feet. My feet feel so comfortable. I feel light-footed. 
that it means light-headed. <laughs> yes, well, you pay all that money for something that make your feet smell. <laughs> no, please, just go and stand over there because I can't stand the glare from that track suit anymore. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Shirley? What's a hundred pounds here and a hundred pounds there compared to good health? You mean you pay a hundred pounds for that track suit? Well, it's only money. You can't take it with you. Well, if you carry on this way, we wouldn't even have enough money to get there. <laughs> What's that chest thing? <laughs> Desmond Salon, where you can get a kicking haircut from a wicked stylist. Yes! <laughs> You've been here before? I know, because if you had, I would have remembered. My little sugar plum. Sugar plum? Don't you sugar plum me, you jumped up excuse for a macho man. <laughs> Don't speak to me like that, Shirley. Desmond, have you looked at yourself? Well, of course I have. You look like an acid house raver on acid. <laughs> an acid what? Why act like a teenager when you can't even chat this style? I wasn't <laughs> acting like a teenager. Yes, you were. Every time a young woman walked into the shop, you practically tripped over your own smile. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was just being friendly. You know they're saying, if looks could kill? Well, if looks could undress, some of the women that came into that shop were practically naked by the time they left. <laughs> this is all your fault. My fault? Yes. If you hadn't said I was getting old and needed to go to the doctor, I wouldn't have gone. Patricia wouldn't have said I needed exercise, I wouldn't have met, but got myself a tracksuit and trainer, spent the money, felt young again, felt good, got embarrassed, and you embarrassed me, and, 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 get it up, get it up, you better. Boy, if he carries like this, he has to go back to the doctors again. Right! Show out a dull old, boring, insomniac husband. A married one, didn't I? Oh, you so think I'm a dull old boring insomniac, do you? I don't think you're dull, Dad. That tracksuit is well bright. Yes, one. I'll show you how dull and boring I can be. <laughs> Why did we buy you those bucks, Ashar? No, I did, because yours was dull and boring. <laughs> I'm going out. I hope you're not going out dressed like that. <laughs> he isn't going out dressed like that, is he? The mood he's in, I wouldn't put anything past him. What's the matter with him? He's undergoing a midlife crisis. You better sort it out soon. He hasn't got much time left. <laughs> Michael, I know that I'm going out mood. It means he's gone to the pub and he's gonna roll home drunk. So what's new? Michael, go and keep an eye on your father. Oh, mother. Look, I've got to go home and change. I've got an important dinner engagement tonight. Well, I never said all night. <laughs> Just for an hour or so. Hmm? For me. All right. For you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, where are you going? Oh, Michael. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> well, do I look cool? <laughs> oh, hey. Cool. <laughs> And an orange juice, please. <laughs> you see, the thing that most women don't realize is that men need to flirt. Yama! Yeah, you flirt, don't you, pork pie? Yama! Yeah, well, about, about five years ago. <laughs> How about you, Michael? Oh, no, no, you got that doctor girl, Patricia. Look, Father, what you need to do is to float out, go home and flirt with Mother. No, 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 men should never flirt with their own wives. They should always flirt with someone else's. <laughs> you see, the thing is, that although this body might look my age, deep down inside, I feel just like when I was 21. 21? <laughs> yes. Why is it that when you reach a certain age, people always think you're past it? Past what? It's, it's a long time since I had any itch. <laughs> I don't want to feel like anymore. <laughs> you know, 
sometimes I look at you, I think, why are you so ugly? They say, like father, like son. Patricia says you look like your mother. <laughs> I agree with her. Your mother's the sexiest woman you'll ever meet. Yeah, man. What do you mean, yeah, man? I think Shirley is sexy. You do? Yes. Well... So you fancy my wife? I didn't say fancy her. I just said... Forget what I just said. How can I forget it? Goodbye. If I ever catch you looking at my wife... Gentlemen, please. I think it's time to go home. Yeah, man. Father, you have a sexy woman waiting for you at home. And pork pie. I'll give you a lift. <laughs> This make me brazen and that make me brazen and this make me brazen more. Is this your car, sir? Of course it's his car. It's definitely his car. He bought it. Well, please. So you bought it, did you, sir? <laughs> you trying to imply that I stole it? You said it, sir, not me. I was just agreeing with the elderly gentleman. Who are you calling elderly? <laughs> Would you mind stepping out of the car, sir? Been to the pub, have we, sir? Yes, but I haven't been drinking. And you won't mind blowing into this, then, will you, sir? If my son says he hasn't been drinking, he hasn't been drinking. Look, father, please. Well, what's wrong, officer? He only has to blow if he's had a drink. Only if you had a drink, then you have to blow. I've had a drink. Let me blow in it, not him. <laughs> well, please, look, let it go. Don't worry, sir. We'll deal with it. Look, I know how to deal with it. And you can't obstruct. No, 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 no. Just that I'm learning longer. I know how obstructive he can be. Get out of the way, mate. Right. Leave him alone, he's harmless. And uh, get off! <laughs> oh, oh, now look what you've done. There's <laughs> one? <laughs> Not another geriatric. <laughs> I'll be quiet. Who are you calling Grandad? Don't you speak to me like that. I am older than you. That figures. <laughs> Don't worry, Desmond. I saw everything. <laughs> oh, Michael Ambrose, you pathetic assistant bank manager. Uh, yes. I'll have a bottle of champagne and a dozen oysters to start with, please. Let me out, please! <laughs> please just make me brazen. I want to go to the toilet. Well, why don't you go, then? How do you expect me to go in this thing? Look, I don't even want to look at you, let alone talk to you. I'm not going in this thing. It's too small. <laughs> you fill it up just by looking at it. <coughs> do you know how much tonight has cost me? Why, why is money the only thing to make you angry? I was talking about personal costs, not financial. But it may well be financial if I end up with a criminal record. How about I look at the bank? Well, don't tell him about it. <laughs> anyway, we were put in here for drunken behavior. You were put in here for drunken behavior. What were you put in here for? Trying to stop your drunken behavior. Well, at least your breast test was negative. That's because I didn't have a drink. <laughs> I wish I had, then I had some reason for being here rather than cooling off for the night. 
I mean, what am I meant to say to Mandy for letting her down like that? Ever since I can remember, you've been an embarrassment, Father. I don't know what it is. It's, it, it seems to me I bring out the devil in you. But I don't need to. You are the devil. <laughs> I don't know, Father. I mean, maybe we're getting too old to be constantly at each other's throats. Maybe when this is over, we should call a truce. Yes. I mean, never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Let's be adults about this. I'm sorry I called you the devil. Let's just do this time together. What do you say, Father? <laughs> Father? <laughs> well, they're keeping them in overnight. Thank you, Gloria. So, Paul, why, where were you when all this happened? I, I was finishing my drink. <laughs> inside the pub? Yes. So how come you saw everything if you were inside the pub? Well, when I came out, I saw everything. I saw them getting into the van. What's so funny? Marco being arrested. I'd have loved to have been there just to see his face. <laughs> Stop it, you two. Can you imagine a bank manager with a criminal record? Yeah. <laughs> uh, excuse me, can I have a loan? Don't worry, mate. I'll help you steal one. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy! What? Uh, have they gone? And who might that be, sir? Some people are permanently gone. Some people are so gone, they never turn up. You mean the review board? I mean you! I know. What did they say when I didn't show? Never mind what they said, sir. It's what I'm going to say. Sit down, Michael! <laughs> sir? <laughs> In case it escaped that big head of yours, and heaven knows it's humongous, <laughs> we had a dinner appointment last night. Mandy, look, I will explain, but I want to know what happened at the review board. Is that all you're interested in? Well, nothing happened at the review board because you weren't there. And to think I was nice enough to save your bacon, you pig! You did? <laughs> yes, I said there'd been a sudden death in the family. Oh, there will be when I get my hands on my father. <laughs> there will be when you see this. What's this? That's the bill from the Caprice. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Cheers. Desmond! Pops, what, man? You mean I let you out? Don't worry, Dad. Your record's safe with me. Desmond. Shirley? <laughs> you think you're gonna get round me like that? Yes. <laughs> Just this once. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shirley, let the family down. Well, if you didn't get the notion in your head to try and recapture your youth. None of this would have happened. I know. Sean, you can have that jogging outfit as an early Christmas present. I don't need exercise to sleep. All I need is a prison cell. <laughs> <laughs> That's dread, Pops. I mean, let's face it, it looks Chris on me and, well, sad on you. <laughs> sad? Does that mean I can have 100 quid trainers? Yes. Easy. <laughs> you were right, Shirley. Them things is for kids, not for an old wreck like me. <laughs> From the long walk nights to the ocean breeze to the dump and to the rain of London City. We come from the sun. When I was... <laughs> what I was... <laughs> no, man, stop, watch. Where was I? You were talking about the brain drain. I think that's what you got, and it does. No, <laughs> what I got is a riser. Oh, <laughs>
Look at this. What is it? Oh, it's private. <laughs> my relatives have sent me a shopping list of things I must buy for my money. They must think my middle name is Harrods. Oi, that's my middle name. I'll sort it out for you, Matt. With a decent price thrown in for free. What you got then? Well, my Auntie Janet wants a video. What? Cousin Benjamin, video? a ghetto blaster, fridge freezer, blaster. and washing machine. Uncle Albert, 200 long lasting batteries, a toaster, <laughs> and thick cut marmalade from Fort Ham and Masons. <laughs> My nephew wants a radio for his car and. Uh... Can you join? Can you join? <laughs> no, he wants fairy dice. Fairy dice? Fairy dice? Fairy dice. Fairy dice. What has happened to Africans? Have they gone mad? I could have told you that. When I was young, we didn't need washing machines. No, when we were young, washing machines were called mothers. <laughs> Our traditional culture has been abandoned for Western goods and the lure of the dollar. Everything has a price tag. Yep, and this lot will cost you 2,500, but to you, 2,499. <laughs> Done, result. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, look, I'll tell you what. Here, Des, get that I, Look, I'm cutting my own throat at this price. Two, two, no less, lovely. And a cuddly toy for me? <laughs> uh, Cedric, didn't I put some foam on your face? Yes, you did. You've been waiting so long, it's evaporated. Right. <laughs> We've talked about African traditions. Now it's time to talk about business traditions. What are you doing here anyway? Haven't you got a bank to go to? I told you, Father, I've taken three days off. I saw the auditors yesterday, and quite frankly, we're stagnant. Does that mean you're green and smelly? No, it means I'd like a director's meeting in the boardroom as soon as possible. Boardroom? Kitchen. Well, instead of being bored in the kitchen, I'd much rather discuss this matter down here with my friend. Yama! Here? <laughs> yes. It's a West Indian tradition that a barbershop is an open forum for this... <laughs> for this stuff. OK. So, how do you propose to improve things, Michael? Right. Structural efficiency. Sign indication, monthly ratio graphs, micro business management, and a plan which will lead on to a macro overview. Well, it's interesting you should mention this, Michael, because I just put together a similar plan. You, you did? did? <laughs> oh, yes. We did this in college. My project was on a small farming business which specialized in pigs. Did you find a lot in common? <laughs> Michael, what does all this gibberish mean? Well, whatever it is, I disagree. Well, sit down, you can't see you talking. <laughs> well, it's quite simple, Shirley. It's an Americanism. Lean business equals mean business. I told you I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the flabby parts that you want to cut off? Me. <laughs> well, for a start, I think we need to institute a proper appointments book so that we can program each customer into a time. That way we get some more customers, obviously, will increase our profits. This shop is not about profits, Michael. It's about tradition. In Desmond's, you get more than a haircut. In Desmond's, you eventually get a haircut. <laughs> but we've been open two hours, and in that time, we've had two customers. Poor Pie Matthew and Lee have had five cups of tea, three slices of toast, and Cedric's had shaving foam fling pan him fierce. Yeah. <laughs> you agree with him, Cedric? Yes. You think I should take less time on each customer? Ah, yes. Good. Your time is out. Get out of here. That's not the idea, Father. Well, what's the idea, then? Look, if you can push this shop into a fast-forward mode and earn an additional £100 this week, I will double it. What do you say? Am I hearing this right? If I was to make an additional £100, he's going to give me £100? Sounds suspicious to me. Sounds delicious to me. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for the fast-forward shave. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gloria. It was much better yesterday. Yeah, Gloria, it was kicking. I mean, it was great. Oh, don't apologise. Ain't your fault. We all know who the problem was. What's that, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> all right, see what they're going to You happened, Spider. Why did you come? That's a silly question, isn't it, Sean? Yeah, it's obvious you're not interested in history. Sean, history's about yesterday, man. These girls are about today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we came here for an oral history lesson. Instead, all we got was an oral slangy match between you and Mrs. Mackenzie. <laughs> How do you expect me to take this thing seriously when you have a woman teaching African oral history and she's Scottish? <laughs> yeah, but her heart's in the right place. Speaking of hearts, no spot. <laughs> Hello, Gloria. Remember me? 
How can I forget you? I have this effect on women. Yeah, like a toothache. Some pain can be pleasurable, like heartache. Hello. What's your name? Louise. So, uh, you've come to check out the African experience? Yeah. You're looking at him. Come on, Louise. Don't worry, Gloria. I can handle him. He's only a boy. Oh, uh, which bits of me would you like to handle then, Louise? Oh, your throat. <laughs> Great. You realise we have to find a new teacher now, Spider? Oh, no. I'll do it. Don't be stupid. <laughs> it's got to be somebody who knows something about the subject. Preferably somebody not from Scotland. Someone from the Gambia. Yes. <laughs> yes. Where's that? Right, Father, your next appointment's in three minutes. Mother, yours is in five. Next, number 25. I'm working as fast as I can, Michael. Next, 26. This whole thing is alien to West Indian culture. I agree. Enlighten me. And in the Caribbean, things don't necessarily go by time. If you have an appointment to meet somebody at 2 o'clock, that usually means 5 o'clock. <laughs> If you want to meet somebody at five, why don't you just say five? Because then they'll turn up at eight. Next, 27. It's the same in the Gambia. <laughs> we call it GMT. GMT? Gambia maybe time. <laughs> so you mean to say in the Caribbean everything runs three hours late? Well, that explains a lot. No, in the Caribbean things do run on time, but in their own time there's not all this rushing about. The only reason people rush about over here is to keep warm. <laughs> Next, number 28. <laughs> Pope, are you still here? Yes, but not for long. I'm fed up with your son's rudeness, Desmond Ambrose. Come on, Matthew, I'm going. Where to? I don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> right, man. I've got you the video, the toaster, the ghetto blaster. Chaz says he'll sort you out with that marmalade next week. Market's a bit dicey at the moment. Speaking of which, because you're such a good customer, mate, I've got you a groceries. <laughs> what on earth do you think you're doing? This shop is for people who have appointments to have their hair cut. If you want to conduct your business, please take it back out on the streets where you belong. <laughs> Listen, Michael, we was born in the same country and we went to the same school, right? Well. I went when it was still a grammar school. You came along when it became a comprehensive. Just answer the question, yes or no? Yes. We share the same common history and I still don't know where you're coming from. <laughs> well, it's quite simple, really. You see, I work in a bank, you work on a store. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Oi. You know you need an appointment to come in here, didn't you? What is this? Oh, this is a fast-forward way to take money from Michael. What are you? The Peckham tribe? Yo, what's happening, people? I think they look very smart. Thank you, brother. Brother? Well, yeah, we're all African descendants, so it's like we're all brothers and sisters. And if Matthew is my brother, I better put myself up for adoption. <laughs> uh, don't you think you're taking this, um, African thing a bit far? What do you mean, African thing? Yeah. Oh, don't waste your breath on him, Sean. He's too bourgeois to check where he's coming from. <laughs> Matthew knows where he's coming from, don't you, Matthew? I do. Yeah, man, Africa. <laughs> uh, Mother. Uh, next. You see, today, Matthew, we went to an oral history lecture. Yeah, and we was robbed of a very valuable class by the resignation of our teacher. So I'm a robber now. So there's a vacancy. We thought you might be interested in it. Well, I must say, um, I could do with the money to pay for my relatives' excessive demands. Have you ever talked before? No, but I could give it a try. Oh, so what does oral history consist of? Next. <laughs> Storytelling. Stories which encapsulate generations of wisdom. You mean they pay you to tell stories? I can tell better stories than Matthew. I don't think so, Porcupine. You see, West Indians only have the stories we Africans have handed down to them. Handed down? Damn cheek! 
I mean, I could tell a better story than any African. And I can tell better stories than any Desmond. Oh, no, you can't, Popa. You always get things the wrong way wrong. I do not. Very well. I'll challenge you. You won? I like it. I'm going to have a storytelling contest right here in this shop. Here? Yes. yes. What better place? <laughs> Yes, Daddy? <laughs> Look around you. What do you see? Nothing. That's it. Your efficiency has been so efficient, we don't have any more customers. <laughs> don't worry, we will have. Yeah, and if the last few days are anything to go by, we finish all our customers by one o'clock. Then there's a little trickle round about five, which means we spend most of the day twiddling our thumbs. I can hardly move, much less twiddle my thumbs. <laughs> I haven't seen any of our regulars for days. If you're talking about pork pie, Matthew and Lee, they never pay to have their hair cut. They're still our regulars, and they don't bore me as much as you do. Father, this is business. No one said we had to like each other. We just had to like the sound of the tills ringing. It's not about tills ringing. It's about friendship. There are no friends in business, Father. Everybody's out for themselves. It's about the quality of life. Ever since I was a little boy back in Guyana. A naughty little boy. A naughty little boy. <laughs> <laughs> back in Guyana. I've always known there was something special about our culture. What connection has that got with me? I'm a Londoner. I have to compete on modern terms with the people around me. It's a rat race out there. And you the rat. <laughs> Michael, you may be today's man. Computer literate and all that. That's fine. But your origins are West Indian and African. A great, proud history all distilled into you. If you deny your origins, then you lose part of your richness as a person. I mean, you like a Beaujolais Nouveau, whereas you could be a nice little claret. Yes. <laughs> You're like a shallow boat that could get blown over in a storm. You're like a guitar with one string with no chord sounding. <laughs> Some people said the black kids today, in spite of your origins, you can do anything. But we say because of your origins, you can do everything. Yes. <laughs> Michael, you're a product of your heritage, whether you like it or not. So recognize it and stop trying so hard to fight it. Money, isn't it? This is it. Ah, surely the heart. <laughs> story Matthew will tell. I'm really excited about it. Oh, I know. I can feel it from me, you know what I'm saying, Louise? <laughs> After all, we were born with an African tradition. Yeah, so? So? I could show you a few traditional moves, know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, Spider, and I don't want to move anywhere. Yeah, and your arm can go back to the roots where it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, Glor, I can take care of him. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> so, have you ever tried to trace back your ancestry? Yeah. We're called the Downtrodden Tribe. That's where my roots are. What, really? Yeah. We were so downtrodden, I could still feel the footprint, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's right here, on my heart. If you stroke it, it might just ease the burden. <laughs> All right, then, a little cuddle. They say a cuddle relieves tension. What do you say? Well... Oh, go on, just one. It won't hurt. You know you want to. And it won't only ease my condition, it'll also ease your guilt of being one of the oppressors. <laughs> oh, you mean our ancestors were responsible for slavery and stuff? Yeah. Release me. Release me. <laughs> what, just one? Well, how many does it take? <laughs> All right, then. Whoa! <laughs> Sean, what are you going to do, Sack, about your friend? Gloria. It's not what it looks like. He was just trying to get rid of a bit of historical tension. If the tension is where I think it is, it definitely adds to it. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Spider-Man? Every time you come here, you give people grief. Not you and all. I thought you'd understand being a man. But then again, you're only a boy. <laughs> Sean! Who are you calling a boy? It, it was just a figure of speech. Yeah? Well, you seem to figure in every speech around here. So just button it, because I'm fed up with you running off your mouth. Easy, bro. I'm not your bro. Yeah, but we're all descendants. Yeah? Well, the only descending you're going to be doing is down those stairs. So just sit down and rest yourself. <laughs> Easy, 
Jesus. What's this, a wake or something? Somebody died? Yes, the shop. Very nice to see you. Sit down, the usual place. I don't know, Des. Usual place looks a bit busy to me. I think I'll just stand and mingle with the crowd, you know? Look, <laughs> <laughs> boy, you're a sight for sore eyes. Let me wait off your kids. Oh, look, another gate crusher. You sure you got a license to hold all these people, then? Give it a break, eh, Lee? It's you, Michael, that should be giving us a break. That's right. Sit down, no man. Dress down, surely. Dress down. Ah, so you want me to stay now, huh? When you wanted me to go, I didn't have any wear. Now I have some wear, you want me to stay. So where you been? Fat Larry's. Fat Larry's? Yeah, man. Break my cup. You know I hate Fat Larry's. Yeah, man. <laughs> fat Larry's are hairdressers on Tumut Road. Yes, the Greek Cypriot. You see, the Greek Cypriot men, they understand tradition as well. Fat Larry serves tea. Yep, and toast. You as well? Well, we wasn't getting much joy here, was we? Vince and Bert were there. Percy. And Cyril. Ron was there. And Leroy. All right, all right. Fat Larry knows how to run his place. Anyway, I didn't come here to talk to you. I came to beat Matthew's African backside with a Guyanese story. <laughs> <laughs> so what story are you going to tell him? The guitar man. I thought it was called the banjo, man. Oh, banjo, guitar, violin. It's a story, same difference. Are you going to tell a story, Mr. Brown? Yes, Louise, a great Guyanese one. Uh, excuse me, shouldn't you be doing this upstairs? Ah, oh, shut up, my curl. You might learn something. Tell him pork pie. <laughs> if you remember, it started with a man walking past a stream when he sights this beautiful woman. No, 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 it doesn't start like that. It does. No, it starts when the man finds a guitar by the side of the road. No, he found it in the gutter. Gutter? Yes. Will he ever get a story right? <laughs> yes, he found it in the gutter, took it home and dried it. Now, the guitar had become warped by the water in the gutter. But when he strummed it, it gave the most magical sound to those who chose to hear it. <laughs> to the others, I... it made an awful sound. So then he became... And that's when he went past the woman by the stream. So then he became a wandering guitarist, but nobody wanted to hear him play, so they drove him out of every village. Bubble. Yes, and that is when he walked by this woman near the stream. That's what I said. He walks past the stream and saw this woman. <laughs> she had a hideous face. I thought you said she had a beautiful face. That's right, she had a beautiful face. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know this story better than me? No. no, no. <laughs> he saw this woman with a beautiful face who was hideous because somebody had cast a spell on her. No, 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 it was a wicked mother because she wouldn't obey her. No, it was because she was more beautiful than the wicked stepmother. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he felt so sorry for her, he played her a tune. She couldn't look at him because she felt so ugly. But when the tune was over and she saw her reflection in the water, she was transformed into the beautiful woman that she once was and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> Bun and cheese, anyone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great guy in his story. Ah. <laughs> I have come here today to be the luminist, the orator, the ambassador, the prominent courtier. Matthew, you're really kicking in that robe. Right? <laughs> I mean, you look great. Huh? Me know. <laughs> anyway, Matthew, what about your story? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. for an African story, we need to create an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. First of all, I would like you all to be seated on the floor at my feet. I'm not sitting at your feet. <laughs> Sit! <laughs> Sit, Michael. <laughs> I dedicate this first story to Michael. This is a story which the young women of our village were warned about. A young girl had come of age, and now her father wanted a suitor. Many men approached him for her hand in marriage. How many men? They must have been soft, because if it was me, she'd have no problem. Spider. <laughs> but no man was handsome enough, not even a spider. Then one day, she went to the market, and she saw a handsome stranger. 
she couldn't take her eyes off this man. So she decided to go and see where he lived. The girl's got sense. <laughs> <laughs> you are only a spider, whereas this is a cobra. Think about it. As I said, she couldn't take her eyes off him. She follows him to a beautiful place, a paradise. It was like heaven. They become lovers in this paradise. But while she sleeps, her handsome lover turns into an ogre and devours her. <laughs> the moral of the story is... Brush your teeth after you've eaten. <laughs> All that glitters is not gold. Hey, Michael? Ah. Well, Matthew, those stories were wonderful. You've really gone up in my estimation. Not in mine. <laughs> I like the one about the talking hyena. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. So did I. It reminded me of Michael. <laughs> Where is he? Still calculating the money to see if he owes us a hundred pounds. He's probably trying to figure out your money, Pops. Sure. <laughs> I know that smile. What does it mean? Well, due to the uh, efficient oh, get on with it, boy. <laughs> You've won. <laughs> the shop has made an extra hundred pounds. <laughs> and, true to my word, here's the hundred pounds I owe you. <laughs> Would you say, Father, that now the shop has made an extra £200? Yes. And would you also say that I'm a partner in the business? Yes. What are you doing? <laughs> it's my percentage of the profits. It's a little tradition of mine. 